Okay, it is 2.30, which means it's time for Let's Talk Templates um, with Christina. And um, just to introduce her to you folks, if you don't already know her, um, Christina is the Instructional Design and Distance Learning Coordinator at Northwest State Community College in Archibald, Ohio. Beginning in the college's IT help desk in 2007, she quickly adopted responsibility for supporting online classes and then led the college's transition to Sakai in 2011. Within the Sakai community, Christina is a member of the JIRA triage team and a dedicated QA tester. She's also provided input on a number of projects, including the Sakai roadmaps, analytics, and rubrics, and Christina is a member of the Sakai PMC. So with that, I will turn it over to Christina. All right, hi everyone, uh, I'm Christina. I also forgot reigning trivia champion. Oh, of course, how could I forget? <laughs> Definitely a title from you, you've claimed. <laughs> Problem with being very good at trivia and very competitive. So today, I'm here just to uh, talk templates with you. So this is a birds of a feather session. So it's not just about me talking about what we do, but getting to have a discussion, you know, each getting to share what we do, possibly brainstorm some ideas and uh, see what we can learn from each other. Why is that one blank? All right. Random blank slide in there. But uh, like Wilma, I'm using Poll Everywhere for a couple questions. So you can um, either pull up that link or scan the QR code with your phone. Give you a minute to get those up. So the first question, you know, we're sitting here, we're talking templates. Why use templates? And this should be, you know, something we all do, but why use templates? Yet. Ease of use, consistency, development, design. Consistency, bouncing up, to, this is a big one. And that is really, for almost all of us, the biggest reason to use templates is because it does make things consistent. It makes life easier. And it just saves effort. Why, why reinvent the wheel? Less work for me, I do love that. Because let's face it, we all want to just make our lives a little bit easier. <laughs> okay, so not seeing too many more movements. So that's about what I expected. Consistency is still the big one. So my why for using templates is ding, ding, consistency between, you know, courses and that's necessary for us because we have you know, students who switch between sections. We have a student who signed up for a face-to-face -face class and then realized they need to switch to an online class because of their work schedule. We have students who are switching from online to face-to-face. -to -face. We have students who are switching between face-to-face -face sections. Um, so just having that consistency, the same work between the sections makes it easy for students who need to bounce between them. We've got the tag courses, so the transfer assurance guarantee. So to make sure that our classes transfer to all the other um, colleges across the state, we need to make sure that our courses are all having these same learning outcomes and the same major activities to meet those requirements. And that is something we have built into our templates for them. And then the consistency is also useful for doing any sort of course assessment. So that way we know what assignment we're looking for. We know what the requirements are for a given paper 
or assignment and then how to assess it for whatever we're looking for, whatever learning outcome is being looked for there. And then also two, less work for individual instructors. For new instructors, it's easier to teach them how to use Sakai as just an instructor first and then teach them how to create and add things later. And also to make it easier for part-time instructors, the adjunct instructors, they get paid to teach classes. They don't get paid to design classes. They don't get paid to build. So throw in there, what do we mean by templates? There's a lot of variation on what we can do with templates. So templates can be, you know, either the official Sakai template sites that have the administrative property, or I think of them as unofficial template sites, just normal sites without that property set that we use as templates, regardless of whether or not they're recognized by the server as a template. The ones that are the official template sites can be used on site creation, used automatically if you've got uh, the script set up, or any of them can be imported by the user from one site to another, from the template into their uh, fall and spring courses. You can have a template that contains all of the course content, all of the assignments, the tests, the discussion topics, everything for a given course. Or you can have a template that is just a framework for building. You can have templates that are controlled by the individual instructors or controlled and owned by either your institution's instructional designer or LMS admin. And you can have them be mandatory, optional. You can have different rules on what's editable. So to tell you um, our story, what we use for templates is we've got kind of two things going on at Northwest State. We have an official default template, and then what we, we have what we call the base course. So the official template the one that actually has the property set is just a single campus-wide template site that is used automatically on site creation. So when we send the list of courses um, to LongSite, all of those classes get created using this single official template. It's This one's intended to be a starting point. So it just has no actual content in it it contains our set of commonly used tools. So um, resources, assignments, tests and quizzes, discussions, messages. It does include a very basic lessons framework. You know, lessons, as we you know mentioned in the trivia, you can have as many lessons pages on the left as you want, and you can name them whatever you want. At Northwest State, Christina will let them have two and they shall be named Start Here and Course Content. So those are what's included in that official template. And then it also includes our um, two default discussion topics, uh, student lounge, unofficial discussion, and an ask your instructor um, topic that is kind of like a FAQ. And that template is owned by me the instructional designer slash LMS admin. So that is, you know, my template, I have full control over it and no one else touches that one. Then the base courses are a very different set. These are user created. We created a generic term in our system and all of the base courses are in that generic term. So they're label, you know, their term label is Gen. We've got base courses for every class with variations for the length of the class, sometimes whether it's online or on campus, 
whether it's on our main campus or one of our remote locations. And for a couple classes, we've got um, variations on terms. Uh, to give you an example for composition one, I've got an eight week online uh, base course. I've got an eight week hybrid base course that was designed for our satellite location. I've got a 16 week fall class that was designed for the timing of fall break and a 16 week spring class that has the timing of spring break in there because it falls in a different place than in the semester than the fall break in the previous semester. Some classes don't have that many options. You know, some do, it just depends on when they're offered and how. Those base courses are entirely created by the lead instructors for the course with me providing advice, support, and review as needed. And those base courses are designed to contain all the content, the assignments, the tests, discussion topics, everything ready to go. We've created a secondary instructor role that is a copy of the instructor role that we removed every edit permission I could find. So any non-lead instructors, the instructors who are teaching the course and need to import it, but shouldn't be making changes, are all added to that base course as the secondary instructor. And then they import that base course into their class for fall or spring. We require they use the base course for the online sections, and we really do encourage it for any of the on-campus sections. And we tell them it can be personalized, but they really shouldn't be changing any of the learning outcomes or the major activities, again, for the consistency. So that is kind of the short version of what I do. So now, what do you guys do? Yeah, please feel free to unmute or um, pop in the chat. Dr. Chuck, that's cheating. So while people are thinking, um, I just want to say that um, the new feature in um, site, uh, import from site, mm -hmm. could make your um, process a little easier because you can have the template sites in the import without having the instructor in there. So you don't have to strip all their permissions away so they can't mess with it. That I, when I saw that on 25, I've been thinking about that um, because unfortunately the ability I can't take away is having them able to accidentally import backwards. If they're my limited instructor, if they've got the power to import from the site, they've got the power to import to it. Right. Right. And yeah, so this one they can't do that with. They can there only have pull unfortunately from... been a couple times where a new instructor has not paid attention to the instructions. <laughs> oh no. And clobbered the base course. Yeah. That's not good. <laughs> so hopefully this new feature will prevent that. Um that's that's the goal anyway. Yeah, my thinking in that feature was to begin to Think of this like a, a Coursera replacement, right? Where you have mm -hmm. a course that's just copied and copied and copied and copied and copied, um, not customized at all. And um, it's more about sessions. It's even a self-paced course, right? Mm -hmm. Meaning that there's some automated process that says, oh, five weeks have passed. Let's make a new course. Just copy, right? And so the, that was kind of like the really quick i mean and and 
Wilma mentioned Sakai Plus a little bit when she was talking about Sakai 25. Um, and one of the things you can do is you can tell Sakai Plus that this is the base template for anything coming in on Sakai Plus on a tenant by tenant basis. So if you have a multi-tenant Sakai Plus out there serving you know, many tenants, many LMSs, you can make a template for each one of them. And it's just like auto templatifies it. You just show up and bam. I mean, not that probably anybody on here is using Sakai Plus because I don't think anyone's using Sakai Plus, but th that was kind of the idea of creating these, these gold standard courses that you basically say instant course creation, just add water. Jennifer, to help with the uh, finding the courses, in addition to having them in that generic term, I've lab I've named all the base courses. They start with zero zero hyphen and then the course number. So when you're doing an import from site, the base courses are all at the very top of the list. That so, is a good idea. That that was me wanting the easy button there. <laughs> But as far as the limited permission role, that came about, like most things, because someone did something they shouldn't. We, we had an adjunct instructor go into the Composition 2 class and not realizing that the base course was shared, started bouncing through the lessons pages and changing stuff. And the lead instructor exploded. So we made sure that, you know, same, you always, you learn, you, you live, you learn. So yeah, we had, we had a uh, part-time instructor do something, you know, we don't want them doing. So we went in, it's like, all right, let's find that permission and let's make it so they can't do that again. Yeah. That's one of the great things about Sakai is you can <laughs> modify those permissions after the fact, if you need to. Um, that, that makes it very easy. Yeah. That's why we removed import from site. They cannot do a replace if they're not an administrator. They can only do a um, merge. Yeah. I've thought about that, but since our like default template we use when they when the site's created has those initial dis has those uh, two default discussion topics and the lessons pages if i directed the instructors to use merge then i've got to tell them to go in and clean those things up remove the extra start here and course content pages So Jennifer, I know you guys use templates quite a lot. Um, is there anything that you do that you think is particularly effective or unique that you want to share? Well, we created ours before they had those nice templates in Sakai. So ours are very custom. They're HTML and CSS created. Mm -hmm. Um we just this last fall set them up. So they actually, when our courses are created, all of that template information goes into every course, whether it's online, in class, hybrid, they all start with that template and then they can go in and, you know, change it if they need to. So if they're not online and they don't need all the information for that, they can delete it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I'd like to get to where we could use the, um, Sakai templates, because I think those are right now are more friendly than the one we have, because ours is so custom. You have to be able to go in and tweak the HTML or do something with the CSS, and it, they're a little bit bumpy to change. Which then leads into the question I've got next, which is how much of your template can the instructors change? So I've got that just as a I'll come back here. Let's see if that lets everyone answer on poll everywhere. Mm 
It's like right now, the biggest answer is everything can be changed and that the template is just the starting point. PowerPoint's being jumpy, so sorry about that. It looks like for everyone that template is just a starting point. So then I'd like to ask, is there anything? Yeah, or oh, they lost the link. Is there anything you guys are doing with templates that I didn't mention that is complete that is different than you know what I spoke about what we were doing? Can I steal your ideas? So Christina, are you guys using the templates that are in Sakai or do you create your own? We've created our own. I like the templates in Sakai. Um, I wish I've been, most of our base courses were designed before those were available as well. So and those lessons, page layouts, but um I designed something that I gave to faculty that was very similar, just a little simpler. It had a section at the top that was two columns, one for description, one for checklist. And then below that, um, just a general content where they could put the readings, the links to the assignments, to the tests. So yours are using like the lesson format to set those up. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I think the beauty of having a template site is that not only can you put lessons content and layout in there as a starting point, but you can also have that selection of tools that you want them to use, like Christina had mentioned. If there's a certain order that you like to have everything in on the left just for consistency across the institution. Sometimes people won't give them that that default uh, set of tools in a default order. Um, so, uh, and we, we do have some clients that do the kind of auto template populating. So based on, um, you know, the course prefix, they get a specific template with specific content in it. So it can really, um, and reduce the burden on your instructional design team if you have those set up that way. Yep. We've got just the single template that all the classes get, regardless of what type it is. And then the instructors are responsible for that import process. But you know, the, the so other next question I have is just what would make templates easier for us to use? You know, what can we take to the developers and say, make it happen? I think for me, the biggest thing that would make it easier is once uh, we get to 25 and we've got the ability to import from a template site without having to have that instructor be a member of that site. So preventing the possibility of wiping out our base course content.
I wonder if maybe the preview of templates could be a little friendlier because right now you can go in when you're when you're making a brand new site and you choose um, the uh, create from template you get kind of a little bit of a preview of the overview page of the templates that exist but it's kind of a lot of scrolling and it's kind of hard to if, especially if there's a lot of info there it's kind of hard to digest Mm So maybe if that could be a little prettier, it might encourage people to browse, you know, the available templates and find one that they really like. -hmm. Yep. And also too, being able to see more than just the possibly more than the overview. Yeah. You know, could we put a link in there that would let them view it in a new tab as a student? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that would be great because then you can explore the whole site. Yeah, look at the lessons pages, look at the list of assignments and see, oh yeah, this is definitely what I want or nope, this isn't it. I like that idea. I feel a feature request coming on. <laughs> well, this question and the next question were solely designed to come up with, to, you know, get feature <laughs> request ideas, so... So I see a question from Chuck in the in the chat about gradebook. Um, how do you folks import or how do you handle gradebook items? Do you import and set it all up at the beginning or do you let the instructor make them as they go? Most of ours are all the gradebook columns are present on day one. Jennifer says theirs are set up when the master course is. I know I like having the gradebook items there for day one because it lets the students see, you know, what is going to be need to be submitted in this class and what are the things that have the highest weight. I know that information is usually also in the course syllabus, but Students don't always read the syllabus. And if, if your template has all the assignments built out and the quizzes built out, um, you've probably already got those gradebook columns anyway because they're coming from those items. Mm -hmm. And then the other question I have is what would make the templates more robust? What would make them more powerful? Is there anything we know that they're missing? So I know one thing that people have asked me for from time to time and um, and that is a way of having sort of a master course where if you make a change, you can somehow push that change out to all the copies. Um, now, the logistics of doing that are, you know, intense, which is why we don't have it. But it's an interesting idea if maybe maybe not pushing, but maybe pulling, like if you've copied from a template, maybe you could, as the instructor of that copy, pull any recent changes into your version. Mm -hmm. I know that would have been incredibly useful um, when we had to do the great COVID switch. Yeah, yeah, because you had to retrofit, I think, a lot of sites <laughs> that were already underway. And then Jennifer says, with the granular import, the master courses, you know, can serve as an actual master so you can vary things without recreating. I'm looking forward to playing with that in 25 as well, because maybe that can get rid of some of the variations of base courses we have. If they can have a course content spring version and a course content fall version that has the 
activity organization based on you know that. So yeah, like that, we have eight weeks, two eight weeks in each term. Mm -hmm. So when I teach each eight weeks, I like to switch up the second eight weeks. So have a different quizzes or different tests or move assignments around. And right now I have to kind of do that by hand and import everything from the master and then pick and choose. Whereas if we can have that granular, I can just do that each time I teach it instead of having to delete what I don't want. Well, in, you know, test one, variant two. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that has the potential to be really useful for that. So does anyone else have any other thoughts or any other uh, notes about their experiences with templates or what you guys do? Because if not... I think I can give you back a little extra time, Wilma. Okay. Um, wait, there's one more comment from Jennifer. Let's see. Does anyone else use a template approach or do you use a different way? Um, I guess that was kind of restating your question. <laughs> so, all right. Um, well, thank you. Uh, I think this is a very interesting topic. Um, and so hopefully, you know, I can think of at least a couple of feature requests that we kind of um, batted around here. So um, so maybe the next version of Sakai will have even more um, functionality around templates. But um, thanks for sharing what you guys do. And hopefully if you're not already using templates, you'll think about it because there's a lot of um, efficiencies to doing things that way. So. Uh, definitely something to explore if you're not already using them. Um, and let's see, we are running just uh, about eight minutes early, well, seven minutes early, so not that early. Uh, Dr. Chuck, did you need extra time for the developer school or was that the morning where you needed the extra time? Yeah, I, I do not need extra time for developer school. It was the morning. Okay. Okay, um, so we'll, um, I guess, stick to the regular schedule. So we'll just break for a little bit longer. Um, so I'll see everyone back at 3.20 for um, Dr. Chuck's presentation on Sakai Developer School. And, and then we'll roll right into the wrap up with prizes right after that. So I will see you all in about 15 minutes or so. All right. Talk to you then. <laughs>